For too long, man was trapped, chained to the ground. Hunted. We will continue to fight and die. Destined to fall. Unless we evolve. Okay, so we're sitting down here with Mark from Red 5 Studios to get a little bit of a glimpse of Firefall. Uh, a game that's it's, it's chasing that, that holy grail of the MMA shooter that's you know, some people have touched it, and and, uh, and others are trying to get at it. But we've been we've been waiting one, for ten years. Can you name one successful MMO shooter that's ever been made? Successful one? Well, that I, I guess that depends on how you define it. You have Planet Side Two out right now. It's so doing PvP, thing. Yeah, yeah, I think. But but like in a PVE environment, you had Tabula Rasa. You had you know uh, you know Hellgate London. Uh, this is this is the Holy Grail. This is something that. You know, uh, maybe it's uh, it's it's like a quest for Red Five. We're drawn to it like moths to a flame. It's like it must be possible to do this, right? So that's why we we decided to found the whole company is to try to do impossible things. We want to help change uh, the genres in gaming. You know, I, I came from a background where I was team lead for World of Warcraft, and I left Blizzard to start Red Five. And I said, I don't want to do that game anymore. I want to make a new type of game that's never been done before. I want to figure out how to make this shooter MMO actually work. And I think we finally discovered a way to make it work. And that's what I'm excited to show you today. All right, so let's log on it. Sure, so uh, this is our login screen. We're playing live on beta. We're in closed beta right now. So it's an invite only system. Uh, you either know a friend who can send you an invite, uh, but there's also a way, uh, our users asked us for a way to support the game early, so we released Founders Packs. And with the Founders Packs, you get certain benefits that you can't get anywhere else, and you get early access to the game as well. So we're actually logging in here uh, into a live beta setting. So our servers are based uh, kind of uh, in Europe and in US right now. And so uh, we have European beta testers playing, and we have uh, US beta testers playing. But actually, they're logging in from all over the world but because it's a shooter action skill based game you're much better off if you're playing uh, you know on a European server or US server because of the latency uh, we have a lot of technology that minimizes latency you're gonna find that we're probably the, one of the smoothest feeling uh, you know uh, MMO shooters that has ever been created because we spent a lot of time making sure that the shooter action felt right there's also no dice rolling in the background it's really your player skill that matters and we run full physics on the engine uh, what is the, the secret behind sort of minimizing latency? Because that, that is also something that, you know, a lot of people have been struggling with. Yeah, so uh, we actually looked at a bunch of different networking models, and maybe this gets a little technical, but, and I'm not a programmer, so I, I don't want to get this wrong, but we found that uh, Valve's research into, uh, you know, minimizing latency was uh, uh, really excellent, and they've been very open about publishing papers about it. So after examining many different models, uh, we decided that we wanted to first take a server-based approach because we want to minimize cheating, right? So we, we simulate everything on the server. And we wanted to use the Valve approach to minimize latency, and that turned out to be a good recipe. Now, we had to add our own secret sauce because Valve games don't support hundreds of players in one environment. And so that's some wizardry I don't know how we do. But uh, our programmers have been working on it for a long time, and I'm pretty pleased with the results, actually. So, so where are we jumping in now, and, and can you set the stage a little bit? Yeah, this is a, a future Earth, right? And basically, we are in Fortaleza, Brazil. And when I say we're in Fortaleza, Brazil, I really mean it. We took the Earth data, and we shrunk it down to one-tenth scale. And then we check out Fortaleza, Brazil from that, and then we terraform it, because in the future, environment, they're terraforming their land here to make it more beautiful, and uh, even more beautiful than Brazil is now. And uh, basically, uh, the whole Earth has had been hit by a devastating uh, accident when the Arclight crashed. That's the ship up here. If I look over here, I'll just shoot it way out there. And that ship was trying to travel faster than light for the first time. But when it did, it ripped a, a hole in space-time, and this melding storm came through, which, if I can get a better view of it, off in the distance here, you can see that's the melting storm. It's this, we're in this bubble or this little, little area that's still protected by the still running uh, engines of the ship. 
And so uh, that was bad enough because whatever the melting touched disintegrated. And the only place left that we know of is right here around Fortaleza, Brazil. But then something even worse happened. Uh, creatures started coming out of the melding, uh, no, and, and especially an alien race known as the Chosen, which is uh, kind of a malevolent, uh, very vampiric sort of race. And uh, they've been kidnapping humanity, and they've been taking over towns, and with them comes the melding. When they take over towns, the melding actually, that whole wall moves and will actually sweep over areas of land and deny that to players. And so you can lose bonuses from having those POIs. Some POIs give you XP bonuses, some give you resources bonuses so that's kind of like the broad stage it's like we're in a we're in a post apocalyptic world but it's still bright and cheerful because humanity has a lot of advanced science a lot of technology to cope with this but it's still a, a dire threat here in the in the world all right so should we jump into some some action or something because then you can show off as well how you sort of get into a mission and and what's different in, in that respect sure. so uh one thing that i wanted to get away from it was the mmo trope of quest givers, right? People with exclamation points over their heads uh, that you go talk to. So, I mean, we're a modern world. Everything is driven by uh, radio communications or what we call SIN, which is the shared intelligence network. This is a SIN tower right here. This connects to other SIN towers throughout the world and forms kind of like an internet 2.0, where it's all in our eyes. It's all like augmented reality, sort of like Google Glass, right? I'm so glad that came out because I can actually explain what it does now. <laughs> it's like if you see Google Glass, you know how it works. So you turn on these towers and they reveal areas of the map here. And you can see any sort of activity that occurs there. And this is how you get missions. Once you activate SIN towers, you will see missions on the map or uh, NPCs will contact you uh, you know, through uh, radio transmission. The other interesting thing that we do that's very different is one character only, but you can have any number of different battle frames. These sort of powerful exoskeletons give you primary, secondary weapons, as well as the abilities down here, uh, if I go out here, that you can scroll through. So I see I have Shockwave, Overcharge, Afterburner, and Crater. These three are standard. This fourth one is an ultimate, sort of an idea borrowed from MOBA games uh, and fighter games, where if I do enough damage or healing, that my ultimate will become available and I can do something very powerful. So we, you saw five frames, but another idea we took from MOBA is why stop at five when you can have an infinite number? So uh, if I go to the Battle Frame Garage, you will see that we have 15 available frames uh, currently and we're releasing more every month. So wha what's the, the latest one? Oh, uh, they're all latest. With this patch, we moved from 5 to 15. <laughs> so you have, you have 10 new frames, each with their own abilities. And you can unlock them with piloting tokens that you can earn by progressing your frame or by uh, the monetization scheme, because we're free to play, which is Red Beans. Mm -hmm. uh, three years ago, we said, why don't we do a AAA game for free? And people thought we were crazy. But now I think the idea is catching on, and we find ourselves in good company. So the way that you progress your character is through you know, uh, these three stats. You have mass, which is how much weight you can carry. You have power, which is how much uh, reactor power you have. And this is the number of CPU cores that you have available, which determine, uh, and basically through XP, I can unlock these. And you can see the potential bar as I go up. It'll show you how it increases. Now, why is that important? It's important because uh, what you do is the, those abilities determine what equipment you can actually hang on your battle frame. So everything in the world is done through molecular printing. You know, 3D printing is out in uh, the rage now. Well, in our future universe, everything gets printed, even biology. When a player gets hurt, they'll reprint muscle tissue and skin and things like that. And that's how we, we do death and dying in our game. So, you know, basically you can, we have a very rich, rich resource model where you use these devices called thumpers to come down and drill for resources in the ground. And then you bring them back here and you can refine them into different uh, components that you can use down here to assemble it. So everything in the game is crafted and you can completely tweak your abilities and your weapons by going out in the world finding rare materials because they vary in, in, in strength, mining it and then reattaching it to your character all so that you can better fight the Chosen, better push back the melding to, exp to open up new areas. You can actually push back the melding to reveal new land and new territory. And that's so sounds like there might be some competition for those to place your thumper in a, in a, in a good spot. Well, we 
we really like the Guild Wars 2 philosophy of if everyone's helping out, everyone should get rewarded. So what we did is, uh, I don't see any right now, but uh, well, there's an Ares mission that's uh, become available. There's a thumper icon. That's somebody thumping right now for raw conductive polymers. And so I can actually go there and uh, help out, and it won't diminish their reward. I get an extra reward just for helping them. And so they're happy, and I'm happy. And uh, Or I can join their squad, uh, because thumpers are very hard. The, we have solo thumpers, and we have group thumpers. And in a group thumper, you get a lot more resources, but you really need five people to do it. And it's all about uh, a game of how far can I push it before the monsters will destroy my thumper. Because you drop one of these things, it's attacked by monsters, mm -hmm. and it's always a game of how much can I extract before I have to send it back. Because it's a big rocket, you can shoot it back up in the air again. So we advertise these events here, and you can go join other players. So there is... Uh, there's friendly competition, I would say. Who finds the rare resource vein first? But the resources are completely dynamic. They not only move throughout the world, and they're not in fixed locations at all. We never know when they will spawn. But they're also cyclical. Over time, they wane and wax. And sometimes one week, you'll get a really rare resource for that week, and everyone will want to jump on and get that. Mm. So the way that you find these resources Let me see, call down, series. We've changed the nav wheel. I don't have a scan hammer. This is, this is very embarrassing. Let me go back and make one. Anyways, you, while I'm doing this, uh, what else can I tell you about Firefall? Um, our open world, free to play, MMO shooter, fully dynamic world, attempting to do the impossible. Will this work? Our players seem to like it so far. I think that was one uh, a neat thing. You, you had a lot of your... Uh your player base here to, 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 to share packs with you guys oh in, yeah. in this room late earlier this week. Could you talk a little bit about how, how your players come into the, the development and, and what, they, what they add to it? So, you know, when you're trying to do something that's brand new, that's never been done before, that's very risky, right? Especially when you're talking about millions of dollars of development. So uh, we've kind of reached this point in game development where betas are really short. It's like the last month, or sometimes it's only 30 days before the game releases. And we said, how can you do that? How can you risk 50 million or sometimes $200 million on, on doing something, hoping that it will work without letting people even try it? So what we did is um, most MMOs are three to five years in development. We're in year three of our development. After the first year, we let people start playing the game because we were trying new ideas and we wanted to make sure that they worked before we finished them. So we even share them in a pretty raw state. This crafting UI that you see here is all temporary right now because we don't want to put all the polish and work into completing it until the players are happy with the system in general. So we really build the game with the community and we're very transparent and we're very open with them and we, and we fly them into our offices frequently and we're always doing community meetups and saying, how do you like this? How do you like that? That's created this intense, loyal fan base. We have you know, 900,000 people on our forums. Uh, only a small portion of that are playing the beta right now, but they're all intensely loyal because we're very interactive with our community. So I'm gonna attempt to ma manufacture a scan hammer here, which is the first thing I need to discover where my resources are. So let me see. I also need a thumper. So let's see if I can do a stock personal thumper. Oh, I have no Christite. And I, do I have cheats? No cheats. No, 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 this is not going well. You see, we just did this patch and our servers were down yesterday. So I was like, oh no, we have too many people logging in and the, coming back to see what's new in the patch. But uh, so let me see if I can do this. Oh, the other thing is, you know, we've got jetpacks, so um, you know, I worked on, on WoW and our lead designer, Scott Youngblood, was the lead designer for Tribes 1 and 2. So he said, Mark, if I join your team, you have to have jetpacks. So I said, okay, that's a good compromise. And the fact, the way design decisions go, that usually goes his way because I'm like, well, let's decide this in our gaming styles. And I'll put out a D20 die and put it on the table. And of course, he brings a gun because he comes from a shooter environment. So he always wins. But let me see if I can find a thumper out here that somebody else is doing. So we have gliders too, so you can get on these gliders pad. There's a lot of mobility in our world. It's just fun to tool around. The other thing I can do is there are uh, vehicles in the game, so I can go down and 
call down a LGV, which is our version of a uh, motorcycle. So the, the thumper events, they, they work like an instance and or, or something no, like that? out in the open world, oh, so, so people can join in and join in, you can help out, you can get uh, XP and resource bonus just for helping out, or you can join their squad, and when you join a squad, we don't split the resources, uh, everyone gets the same amount, so everyone gets the full amount of resources for participating in. So this is oil spill. What he's doing is an example of a push mission. So he's giving us different notifications of what's happening in the world. So as I drive around, you'll see that different events are happening. Looks like there's something up here, if you see from my waypoint indicator. Yep, there's an... So these are our little, uh, we call them local event areas. They're scattered around. And these are dynamic. So what is actually the situation here is going to be different every time I go in. And the mission that occurs here also varies. So it looks like someone else is helping out here. Looks like we're supposed to be planting explosives. It's not an MMO unless you can do this. And you can do this, right? Dance. <laughs> Oh, plant the explosive. Oh. When things get hectic, you go quiet. Yes, they do. Sorry, I don't talk when, when I'm like, oh, no, because I actually, I didn't know what to expect coming in here. And so I'm like, oh, this is one I haven't played before. <laughs> it's always tricky to talk and, and play at the same time, yes, you know, from experience. Absolutely. All right, so what else can I see here? We got to see the regeneration there. Yes, yeah. so basically um, there's teleportation in the game called arc folding. And arc folding normally only works on inorganic materials. So when you do call downs and things, uh, some of the ultimates are a call down where you're getting help from the arc light. The, there's one call down ability where the arc light guns will actually do a mortar strike on your position. Uh, there's other ones where, like you saw the LGV, the bike will teleport in front of you. Uh, but you can only teleport inorganic things. You can't teleport organics unless you have a big ship like the arc light that's what they were trying to do but in emergency situations like you're down and you're dying uh, why not take the risk right and so you can survive a small por portion of the chance of course since you're the hero you always survive and then you know using mo biological molecular printing they reprint all your damaged tissue and everything else and you come back into the world so it's a rich sci-fi universe uh, we developed it with the background story with Orson Scott Card who did Ender's Game and a, a very famous science fiction writer um, and uh, his daughter also helped out a lot. She is a, an amazing writer, and uh, she's been helping us a lot with the F Firefall manga series, which is uh, a comic book that kind of like tells you how the world came to be in this. And it's f available for free on our website, and also will be available on our Stage 5 app on the iPad and on Ouya. We're supporting the Ouya platform too, because um, you know we're like, we really love the indie movement. We really love uh, sponsoring that creativity that we think is just going to help the whole industry. And so, um, you know, we're trying to do new things and we want to support people doing new things as well. And as far as the game goes, are you, are you planning to invite more people? Or yeah, near so we'll, soon or? we'll have additional beta wave invites. Uh, of course, you can buy a founder's pack if you like, uh, mm -hmm. for anywhere from $20 to uh, $100 if you want the, the mega pack. Uh, those, I'm shocked at how well those sell. The, the $100 version, I mean, our fans, they're, they're like really excited <laughs> about it. So uh, that, uh, thank you very much for that. Um, and, uh, but uh, we have kind of a rolling sort of system. Mm -hmm. It's more like Gmail. We don't have a launch date. It's just, we'll just keep inviting more and more people. And at some point we'll just, uh, you know, maybe put up an open beta tag and then we'll drop the beta tag completely at some point some point in the future. Yes, some point. When, you know, from, from my Blizzard background, it's done when it's done. <laughs> <So> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. It's great to be here.